I guess the 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 thing that I like most about you know shooting digitally and posting digitally is the fact that the material sort of never leaves the the the, the hands of the production that there's just there's there's no moment at which you know someone else has access to your material and can do something with it or I, I just like the fact that it never nothing ever left the editing room that that it was all being done there you know we were taking the files cloning them baking them putting them into the the editing system and it was all it was we were controlling everything that that aspect of it I really like a lot just from a security level we're very accustomed to backing up data but dealing with what is essentially original negative is takes sort of the traditional backing up of projects and offline media to a whole nother level um, when you think about the financial worth of you know and consequences of losing a day's worth of shooting um, it's something very different <laughs> on set we would copy to one set of drives the compact flashcards, which are what you record to in camera, would come to the edit room. We would then copy those to another set of drives and then start making two sets of LTO3 backup tapes. That process was time consuming. We probably wouldn't finish the tape backups for a couple days, but we had a certain number of compact flashcards and the goal was that by the time the, that we would actually erase the cards, um, that we'd shot on and reuse them on set, we would have three sets of spinning disc backups and two sets of tape backups. Finishing was a whole new arena. We were able to, to work in ways that we just absolutely wouldn't have been able to um, if we were working with film and needed to constantly scan n new pieces of negative and deal with vaulting and unvaulting negative and sending messengering it with bonded messengers to you know different labs and um, just a level of efficiency that was really ultimately far outweighed the complexities of you know dealing with a lot of the new technology because we had access to all this original material it, it allowed us to do um, a large part of the the DI in house, and you know more importantly than the cost, what what that allowed is for Stephen to do a lot of the, um, you know, play with the color and do a lot of the color grading himself, and have access to a, a color grading system in our in our editing suite, um, and you know, I think that that allowed a level of freedom that. Is really important. It's very satisfying for me to be able to physically turn the knobs and get it looking the way I want. Um, so uh, I'm I'm glad to be able to make that part of editorial, you know, to make color correcting a sort of organic part of editorial. Since I'm my own cinematographer and sometimes my own editor, just I I really like the idea of. The stuff shows up at our office, and you know, a few months later, we walk out of there with a file that we hand over, and they turn it into a film print. You know, that's that's a very I like the I, I like the efficiency of that. Uh, from where we started two years ago to where we are now, the post workflow has continuously been improving. So, and we've done that with the camera also. Just try to try to improve the camera, improve the firmware, keep adding features just constantly push what, what, what we can do and, uh, and the same with software, uh, introducing the red rocket card and, and you know, making the post workflow easier and easier and easier. What's happening now with a lot of the DI world is sort of what happened with offline a couple of years ago where it, it stops being this you know, $100,000 system that exists only in a facility where you, know, you have to go and and rent a room by the hour to, to have access to it. And, you know, people edit on their laptops these days, you know, and, um, you know, we're still a couple of steps away from, you know, doing a DI conform on your laptop. Um, but 
that's where that's that's where we're moving with it. I've found myself, especially in post production, as opposed to using the technology to to merely accelerate the process. What what I like to use it for is to is to get to a place of reflection more quickly. Meaning, if you have if you're cutting on an Avid or you're cutting on Final Cut Pro, um, the ability to to have a version of the film quickly and then take that use that extra time that you've bought yourself to sort of sit back and either look at it and or or even leave it alone for a while as opposed to just oh we're, we're going to finish faster <laughs> I think on a micro level, movies are as well cut now as as they've ever been. I think on a macro level, something's getting lost, though. This is what I'm talking about, is taking advantage of the speed of the new technology to afford you time to sit back and look at something and not work on it for a while. Because I see, I see a lot of movies that I think are, on a macro level are sort of misshapen. You know what I mean? Like the individual scenes are cut well and things seem to work, but I, I feel like nobody's taking the sort of time that you have to take to watch it end to end over and over again to really get a sense of what the 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 rhythm of the movie is as, as an entire piece. I feel like we have movies that have more edits in them than they've ever had before and they're longer than they've ever been before. And that's strange to me.